Hello, this is Beth McGill. I'm a language of dance specialist, and I'm going to guide you through an exploration on traveling today. So depending on where you are and uh, your space for exploration, you can make this very big. Maybe you have your headphones in and you're in a fantastic park that has lots of space or a nice big dance studio, or maybe you're in your living room and you have furniture to navigate around. But the premise is always the same, so I encourage you to explore and revisit this exploration in a number of different environments because the feel of this exploration can certainly change depending on your landscape. So to begin, Let's begin by locomoting, changing your location, traveling on any pathway. Beginning at point A, moving to point B, perhaps circling around back to point A. Start to get to know the edges of your performance space, of your movement space. Is it a traditional rectangular space? Is there a downstage? Is there an upstage in your mind's eye? Or are you outside, potentially moving in a space that could be witnessed in the round? And how does that change your sense of place and displacement? Then focus your attention on the direction of your steps or the direction of travel. You may be scooting, sliding, slithering, but focus on the direction of travel. Are you traveling forward, backward, to the right side, to the left side? You can even travel on diagonals. <laughs> They're a little tricky. You have to maintain your front to travel on a diagonal. But just notice if you're traveling in a circle, are you traveling with forward steps? And where's the center of, of the circle? Is it to your right or to your left? And if you decide to step sideward. Where does that take you? What are different modes of travel? Different modes of travel become available and more attainable with different direction of steps or different direction of traveling. So you could skip or gallop forward and back. You could move sideways. You can try a grapevine to the side. When do you decide to step together and when do you decide to cross over the midline with your stepping or scooting? And then let's enter the low level. If you're not there already, enter the low level and continue your traveling exploration. So this might be crawling, scooting, sliding. It might be rolling. How do you locomote in your low level with the additional information? of being in the low level. This becomes a lot more challenging for your mid-body and your core stability. So embrace the challenge here. Notice where the challenge exists for you. Notice how you like to support yourself in the low level. What other supports might be available to you in the low level? to give you new movement experiences of traveling. Traveling, traveling, going from point A to point B. What images and sensations come up for you as you travel in the low level? 
Do you take on a persona or an energy, a character, a totem animal identity? Explore. And then transition into the middle level. So the middle level, just to recall, is that space ar around the midsection of your body. So put as much of your body in that middle area around your belly button. If you were standing up nice and tall, right? So crouched, you could think of crouching, lunging, ducking. That all can happen in the middle level. And how do you travel in the middle level and what challenges are provided here? Maybe the occasional arm support. But what challenge is asked of the legs? What challenge is asked of the whole body to mobilize as you Travel on any pathway, any pathway in the middle level. Now the high level, coming up high, reaching up, leveraging yourself up off of the ground, reaching up high. You can imagine reaching up toward a tr high tree branch, traveling and running or chasing after a butterfly just after out of your reach, right? Chasing around, following and swooping through the space, high level travel. Do you like to travel forward in the high level, sideward in the high level, backward in the high level? And now begin to transition so you can explore how you might transition from high level to middle level or middle level to low level while traveling. Adding the element of level, the component of level to a pathway. You might start in the middle level and then move low and then come back to the middle level and then reach up high. Can you inhabit many different levels in a single pathway, in a single idea? What instances might need multiple levels? What images come up? Choreographic needs to change level as you're traveling on a single pathway, maybe across the stage. And now, come to rest and take a moment to breathe in stillness. Hmm. Sometimes I like to contrast my traveling explorations with something that is more stationary along the vertical axis. So take a moment now to explore flexion and extension that doesn't necessarily travel. Just giving your body and mind a break. What does it feel like to be stationary? A few more of these, just to contrast. And then come to stillness. And let's focus on straight pathways. You can travel in any direction but straight pathways with a sharp angle to denote a new pathway. You can explore walking in a box, traveling forward or backward, sideward. Do you want to turn to change your facing to help distinguish between your straight pathways? What do you notice? 
and then continue to explore these straight pathways and could you achieve your straight pathway by turning either to the right or to the left? So the moment you start your new straight pathway, you are already turning. You're turning either to the right or to the left, and you achieve your pathway by turning. Now, of course, on a straight pathway, it helps to spot, keep you going on the straight and narrow, and then come to stillness. And what about changing the design of your pathway now to be a curving pathway? And a curving pathway is any sort of arcing. It could be an arcing back and forth, like a wavy, wavy line. And there's a sense of these arcs carrying you through the space. You might imagine yourself as a bird gliding around the tips of trees or an animal skittering around the trunks of the trees on the floor. And so we're looking at the arcing nature and how would you distinguish a new arcing pathway from a former pathway? How might you distinguish a new curving pathway from its preceding pathway? Maybe you choose to add a stillness or something else of note, a strong change in level or body position that gives a new focus as you change between curving pathways. Let's contrast this irregular arcing to an actual circular pathway where you are traveling around and around like um, an animal on a carousel. So you're traveling in a perfect circle. You could also imagine yourself walking around a maypole where you are maintaining your constant relationship to the center point of the circle. We call that the focal point of the circle. And you maintain a steady, regular distance between you and the focal point. So as you're traveling around your maypole or around the center of the carousel, you're noticing the challenges sometimes of maintaining a perfect circle. And experiment with traveling forward on your circle and then traveling backward on your circular pathway. Traveling sideward. And now reverse the direction of your circle. Now, I didn't stipulate which way to go first, so you may have chosen to go clockwise or counterclockwise. So now be conscious. Are you traveling clockwise or counterclockwise? How would you know that is true? How do you orient yourself spatially? And this is something that takes practice for many dancers to feel really secure about their clockwise and counterclockwise directions. We explicitly use clockwise and counterclockwise in motif notation and in the language of dance because right and left are reserved for turns that occur on the vertical axis. And our direction of steps can be right or left as we travel on a circular pathway that is clockwise or counterclockwise. So getting really clear on the details of space and when to use the language of clockwise versus counterclockwise, right versus left. And explore just a few more moments. 
clockwise, counterclockwise, your circle can be very tiny, but you still must locomote, or your circle can be big. Maybe you have a, a square island in your kitchen that you can traipse around, something like that. And what if, as you continue your circular pathways, what if you added a, a turn along the way, just somewhere you included a turn, maybe to the right or to the left. It could be a partial turn, a half turn, a quarter turn. It could be a whole turn. When we include a turn on a pathway, we don't know exactly how many are indicated in the score. So the idea is you put one in every once in a while to suit your needs. You might include it at the beginning of your pathway, in the middle, at the end, at the beginning and at the end. It's a different concept, however, from a pathway achieved by turning. A pathway achieved by turning is explicitly from the beginning to the end achieved by rotating the body. If we include a turn here or there, it's much less, uh, it's more of an adornment. It's more of a moment of sparkle inside your pathway. And then let that practice go. And let's start to meander. And I like to meander by exploring my space. Start looking around and notice what do you see in your space and your focus is continually shifting and your, your steps, your footfalls reflect your shifting focus. So there's no steadiness of intention in terms of a single focus. It's about constantly changing, allowing yourself to be irregularly pushed and pulled through the space. You can imagine if you were searching for someone in the crowd, you might take a few steps this way or that way, irregularly shifting. Continuing your meandering pathway, and because there are so many changes to a meandering pathway, we identify it as one idea that lasts a duration of time. So meandering takes time to achieve and to express in performance. So we can't just meander for a few moments, otherwise it would likely appear to be a single form of a pathway, either a straight pathway or even a zigzag pathway, circular or curved pathway. So to be meandering, it really has to have some irregularity embedded in it. And then as you continue, can you add a gesture, maybe a gesture of the arm? And how does that change your perception of the meandering? Maybe a slow gesture as you're meandering. What does that feel like? Or a series of quick gestures as you're meandering. Of course, gestures can be added to any of our pathways. But it's fun to juxtapose gestures in the upper body with a meandering pathway in the lower body. I think that's, I think that's fun. So there are two modifiers for pathways that we want to become aware of, and that is the addition of a concept. And if there's the addition, and there's a square addition bracket, that means that it is added, the concept included in the bracket is added for the duration of that bracket. If, however, we use an inclusion bow, which is a soft-edged, bracket, the curved edge. That means include somewhere, one, two, a few of the ideas. 
but there will be periods where those ideas are not present as well. So now begin a pathway and include here or there a spring, a rotation in any, in any plane. So it could be a somersault, a cartwheel, a turn, wheeling. And then as you continue on this pathway, make a gesture or a few gestures. So your included items are spring, gesture, and turn. They do not have to happen simultaneously, but they do need to be included as part of your pathway. Spring, gesture, and rotation. Try this a few more times. Maybe pick a straight pathway or a curved pathway. Be deliberate in the design of your pathway. And then include one, two, three of these options. And then come to stillness. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Locomoting is wonderfully invigorating. Uh, and it can really build your energy up. So if you want to settle down, you can take a moment at the end of this guided exploration to do perhaps a little more flexion, extension to center yourself. Or if you are ready to go forth with your day or your evening, um, then by all means, keep this energy with you. And I hope you have a wonderfully adventurous day full of traveling. Thanks so much. This is Beth McGill, and I'll talk to you soon.